Hello there game my friends, this is the boy and his dog and welcome to the channel where I play and review every game released on the Evercade, old and new. In today's episode we continue our deeper builds of the 29th Evercade cart Pico Interactive Collection 3 with the 10th game, Zero Tolerance. Let's get started. Europa 1, the flagship of the Planet Defence Corps, has been attacked and infested by aliens. It's up to the five commanders of the Zero Tolerance Squad to eliminate the extraterrestrial threat and erase all evidence of the infection. Zero Tolerance is a first person shooter for one player developed by Technopop and released for the Mega Drive in 1994. To begin with, this game was a bit of a technical marvel at the time running on a Mega Drive. This was the closest people got to a Doom style game on the system. And for that, you have to give it credit. And also let's give credit where credit's due, the squad life system is a little bit genius. At the start of the game you can choose either one of your squad members to control, and each is a little to a lot all different. What makes it unique is, they are also your lives, so if you die with that character, that character stays dead, and you have to pick one of the others. You can even walk past your crumbled dead sprite remains when you have the next character. I love this idea, it really made you think. I won't give it away, but some characters are better left for later stages due to their uniqueness. So once you get the swing of the game, you realise you need to plan a little. And not forgetting the actual object of the game, on the right of the main view you will see a number that will count down when you're hit, obviously your health, but the number on your left is the number of enemies on a given stage. Kill them all, get the number to zero and the game will tell you the stage is secure. On to the next, and that's pretty much it. There's a decent selection of weapons to pick up throughout, from handguns, shotguns, rifles, hand grenades, even launchers. And if you run out of weapons, you can resort to fists. In fact, some are rather good with them. With over 40 stages, the game does try to vary the visuals. From the metallic walls of the reactor stages and the greenery of the greenhouse stages. Although admittedly, there are a lot of residential floors, but it's cool they have windows so you can see out. Nice for you. In the large areas it can go a bit misty so you can't see the other end, but technically this is completely understandable, so not sank to grumble about. The game is hard so thank fuck for save states. Also, which is cool but not a massive thing, you aren't stuck to the stage you are on so you can wander back and forth between depending if there's a central stairwell between floors or an elevator. I've enjoyed playing through this game, but I must admit, a lot of that time was making me think, oh, we get you Nukem 3D in about three months. <laughs> this certainly isn't that, but it's a fun enough diversion while we wait, and a bit of a technical marvel for the time and console it was originally developed for. 
It's certainly not a waste of your time, has a great unique life and character system and enough stages to keep you busy for some time to come. At least until Duke arrives anyway. And if you've made it here to the end of the video, thanks ever so much for joining me. Leave a thumbs up or comment if you'd like. Either way, I'm just chuffed your poke your head in to take a gander. As always, I hope you're having an awesome day, my friends. And until next time, be seeing.